Hello truth seekers and welcome back to our channel, where we unveil the shocking truth behind the glamorous world of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. We are back again with some royal truth bombs that'll have you spitting out your tea faster than you can say God save the king. We're diving deep into the drama surrounding the day Queen Elizabeth shuffled off this mortal coil. And let me tell you, it's juicier than a well done Sunday roast. But before we delve into the tumultuous waters of this revelation, if you haven't already, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. You won't want to miss the explosive content we have in store. So now picture this. It's September 8th, 2022. The world's longest reigning monarch is on her deathbed, and the royal family is scrambling like headless chickens to get to Balmoral. Now, you'd think this would be a time for unity, putting aside petty squabbles and coming together as a family, but oh no, not for our favorite royal drama queens Harry and Meghan. Initially, we all thought Harry and Meghan would be arriving together, like some sort of unified front. But surprise, surprise, an official statement drops faster than Meghan's acting career, saying Harry's flying solo. Why, you ask? Well, apparently the royals thought bringing Meghan was not appropriate. Ouch. That's got a sting more than a wasp at a picnic. Now let's break this down, shall we? While the rest of the royal family is piling into an RAF flight like it's the last chopper out of Saigon, Harry's busy trying to convince everyone that Meghan should come along. It's like watching a toddler throw a tantrum in the supermarket because mommy won't buy him candy. Except in this case, the toddler is a 38-year-old man, and the candy is his wife. But here's where it gets really juicy. King Charles, in what I can only imagine was his first act as the new monarch, puts his foot down. He tells Harry, nope, not appropriate. And let me tell you folks, I would have paid good money to see Harry's face in that moment. Probably turned redder than his hair. So while William, Andrew, Edward, and Sophie are jetting off to Balmoral like royal version of the Avengers, Harry is left behind, throwing a hissy fit. He ends up taking a private jet because of course he does. Our eco-warrior prince always practicing what he preaches, right? But wait, it gets better. Harry's so busy arguing with his family and trying to smuggle Meghan into Scotland that he misses the RAF flight. Talk about dropping the ball. He's so late to the party that by the time his plane lands in Aberdeen, the Queen's already kicked the bucket. Talk about bad timing. Now you'd think that might be a wake-up call for Harry. You'd think he'd realize that maybe, just maybe, he should have put his family drama aside and focused on saying goodbye to his grandmother. But nope, our boy Harry is so furious that he refuses to have dinner with Charles, William, and Camilla that night. Let that sink in for a moment. His grandmother just died, his father has just become king, and Harry's response is to throw a tantrum and refuse to eat with his family. It's like watching a bad soap opera except the actors are less convincing and the plot is more ridiculous. But here's the kicker, folks. A source says Charles has an open invitation for Harry to dine with him whenever he's in the country. How generous. How magnanimous. And how does Harry respond to this olive branch? By slapping it away and stomping off in a huff. It's a massive snub, says the source. Yeah, no kidding. It's like turning down tea with the queen. Oh, wait. And then, as if this whole situation wasn't farcical enough, Harry apparently got out of Balmoral at the earliest opportunity to catch the first commercial flight back to London. I'm sorry, what happened to the private jet, Harry? Did your eco-conscience suddenly kick in, or did you just realize that throwing a tantrum is less fun when there's no one around to watch? Now, I know what some of you are thinking, but you're saying, Harry and Meghan did join William and Kate to greet well-wishers later on. Surely that counts for something. Oh, you sweet summer children, that was about as genuine as Meghan's acting career. It was a PR move, pure and simple. A way to show the world that they're still part of the family, even if they're about as welcome as a fox in a hen house. And let's not forget, Harry did get to wear his military uniform for the vigil at Westminster Hall. How generous of the family to let him play dress up one last time. I'm sure that made up for all the hurt feelings and damaged relationships, right? Right? But here's the real tea, folks. Royal author Katie Nichol, who's got more inside scoops than an ice cream parlor, says there hasn't been a reconciliation between Harry and William. Shocker. You mean to tell me that years of public backstabbing, tell-all interviews, and Netflix docuseries haven't magically healed their relationship? I'm stunned. Absolutely stunned. So what have we learned from this royal shit show? Well, for one, Harry and Meghan are about as good at timing as a broken clock. 
they managed to turn what should have been a solemn family moment into yet another episode of The Harry and Meghan Show. But more importantly, we've seen that the royal family has finally grown a backbone when it comes to dealing with these two troublemakers. Charles putting his foot down about Meghan coming to Balmoral. That's not just a king asserting his authority, that's a father saying enough is enough. And you know what? Good for him. Good for all of them because let's be real folks, Harry and Meghan have been playing the victim card so hard it's practically worn out. They've been crying about privacy while splashing their dirty laundry across every media outlet that'll have them. They've been whining about the pressures of royal life while clinging desperately to their titles and the perks that come with them. It's high tie someone called their bluff. It's high tie someone said, you want it out. Fine, you're out, but you don't get to cherry pick which parts of royal life you keep. Because that's what this is really about, isn't it? Harry and Meghan want all the perks of being royal without any of the responsibilities or scrutiny. They want to be treated like royalty when it suits them, and like private citizens when it doesn't. Well, I've got news for you, Haz and Megs. That's not how it works in the real world. In the real world, actions have consequences. In the real world, you can't trash your family on international television and then expect them to welcome you back with open arms. In the real world, you can't demand privacy while constantly putting yourself in the spotlight. And in the real world, when your grandmother is dying, you put your petty grievances aside and you show up. You don't argue about who gets to come, you don't throw a temper tantrum when you don't get your way, and you certainly don't refuse to have dinner with your grieving family. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a humble critic, watching this royal drama unfold like the rest of you. But let me tell you folks, if this is how Harry and Meghan behave when the chips are down, when the family really needs to come together, then maybe, just maybe, the royals are better off without him. Because at the end of the day, the monarchy isn't about individual egos or personal vendettas. It's about duty, about service, about putting the needs of the nation above your own. And from where I'm sitting, Harry and Meghan have shown time and time again that they're not interested in any of that. So here's my advice to the royal family. Stand firm. Don't let these two drama queens dictate the narrative anymore. You've got a monarchy to run, a nation to serve, and a legacy to uphold. Don't let Harry and Meghan's soap opera distract you from what really matters. And to Harry and Meghan, grow up, move on, find a purpose that doesn't involve constantly rehashing your grievances or playing the victim. You wanted freedom, well you've got it. Now use it to do something meaningful, something that doesn't involve throwing your family under the bus at every opportunity. Because right now you're not revolutionary, you're not brave, you're not speaking your truth, you're just two entitled individuals who can't seem to understand that the world doesn't revolve around you. So what do you guys think about it? Please share your thoughts in the comments and let me know what you think. Until then, stay tuned for more shocking stories and scandalous exposés on our YouTube channel. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on the latest from the world of the royal family. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Bye for now.